just letting you take the lead. Episode 366. Oh. Hi, Sarah. Oh, I love that number one. Yeah? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I don't know. Three, six, and six. Mm-hmm. I like yeah, it. I, I love when. You know what else I hear? The gardener. Yep. He loves to fire that mower up. <laughs> Or Literally. blower, mower or blower. As soon as we push record. Yes. So you get it. that in the background. That's right. Just yeah. deal with it. Yeah. Every now and then you hear a little jingle jingle of Bo's uh, collar, but she's not here today. I know. Yeah. Why she's on a play date her? with another friend who's visiting and their dog. That's nice. Yeah. It's well, really cute. She's like adopted all of this dog's behaviors too. Like she's a beta. Totally. Yeah. And they're like hanging out on the patio. That's and really like cute. I bring my dog over here. She does not care about your cat. She's like... Hey, cat. Uh-huh. I'm just so you're being a dog. Yeah. And uh, let's all get along. This dog starts, like, growling at the cat, and then she's like, Rrr. I'm like, Bo, you don't do that. What is this terrible, bad, learned behavior you're doing? Like, really? She's just like, oh, is that what I'm supposed to do? Is that what cool dogs do? Oh, I'm going to do that. This dog does seem cool. So. It's funny that you mentioned the cat, though, because I was going to tell you that I got an, a message from a brainiac who said, can you settle a bet between me and my husband? Oh, oh I can't wait for this. <laughs> what is your cat's name? <laughs> And Both I of you said, <laughs> Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> Mr. Miyagi. And she was like, thank you. Uh, he was wrong. And I'm like, what did he think right. it was? And she said... Miyagi won Kenobi. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's funny. I <laughs> see where he was going with this. But how could he be so certain? Miyagi won Kenobi. It doesn't really roll off as well. No. Obi- Mr. Miyagi? Yes. Come on. You wouldn't say Miyagi, and then it would be like, oh, I see, like Obi, like... Miyobi? Mi- yeah, it Maybe doesn't it work. Maybe like that. Yeah, it's not the same. So she won the bet. It could be like Kitty won Bonobi, or like... You could. You, know. you could work that out. Yeah, maybe. I had a goldfish named Vincent Van Goldfish, and I thought I was really clever with that one. That's great. I yeah. like that one. Yeah. Do you find it weird that in England they say Van Gogh? Oh. Well, I guess maybe No, all that because my mom is one who pronounces every... Yes, every single artist name right. And every time she goes, you mean Van Gogh? Like she that. doesn't. Yes. And she used to be mad at the Ninja Turtles because she said they were slaughtering the names of the... Italian Renaissance artists, and I was like, or those are the turtles' names, and the Italian Renaissance artists are different. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, they're allowed to have She was like, some it's license. Michelangelo. I'm like, no. Michelangelo? Yeah, she would always say, like, everything had to be, and don't get me started on people who mispronounce <laughs> Bruch- Bruschetta. Oh, or like... <laughs> don't say Bruschetta. She, you will get a lecture from my mother at if you what are a server. What will she say? She will correct your pronunciation. And what is the right way? Bruschetta. She doesn't. Yes. Those people are the worst. I know. And like when they say Euro instead of hero. Oh, like I know that yeah. there's a big debate. Yeah. And like I want to say it right, but yeah. I don't want to be pretentious. Yes. Like or a croissant. Yeah. Or we're not going croissant. Right. Like right. I know the I know. right way. We know, but like <laughs> you don't want to be do an asshole. Well, that's what I was saying about learning the ukulele. I'm like, which one makes me more of an asshole? If I don't know how to play, but then pronounce it ukulele, <laughs> or if I do know how to play and pronounce it ukulele. Like, which one is more offensive I or have more to of say like the I'm an first asshole? One. Is like worse. Yeah, that's what I think. And then like, because I was saying it one day, and somebody's like, "You mean ukulele?" Who and I was like, did this? No, I don't mean that. Because to me, that it's almost well. Like also, it was like an eleven-year-old who told this to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, who had superior ukulele skills to mine? Shall we like at the time? wave to my gardener? I, I, Here, yeah, I'll pause it like to spare you guys. All right, that was very loud. Yeah, we he, did spare you for real. He like mowed your cement out in front of this window he's very thorough yeah and then we like joked that he was probably just like walked away from the lawnmower and like left it idling <laughs> right and i can't him. see and she's so like he actually did that <laughs> yeah. he's just left it running Wait, right in front of the window we I'm have photo get, evidence I'm gonna get a picture. oh it's so funny there he is but you know what your yard looks great yeah <laughs> right my yeah. grass is short yeah. you guys yeah. yeah why couldn't the pool guy come on these days that's I, silent i know uh, what's a girl yeah. gotta do to get her staff to cooperate <laughs> to get her staff to cooperate <laughs> Um, That's great. Do you want to hear something weird? Always. So you may have seen this. There is a new type of ice cream. It's uh, popular in a particular, I don't know where. Uh, Guinea pig. (laughs) That's not a thing. Of course I've eaten guinea pig. but Where? uh, 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 Peru. It's very common there. Why, why, why? 
the guinea pigs just run around the house like like for real. What they, house? Like a, people in Peru when they live, they're they're like it more in the mountain areas or like farming. They're and everything. wild. They're no, they're house pets, but they let oh. them kind of run around in the house like they and then they become their meals and i was like i couldn't I do that have, because i would I be have questions and they're they're really dull, they're pretty good okay yeah. first and of they all have like teeny tiny little drumsticks yeah. oh my yeah. drumsticks like from the teeny tiny little legs yeah oh lord have mercy yeah. okay okay yeah. wait it's first good of stuff. all do they not have a problem with the droppings oh good question yeah but, i mean they're probably but the way i've seen them is like <laughs> like yeah, there's kind of like straw, and they live like make their little bed in like a little straw area, and they're like in the corn, and they're like you know yeah, fenced off, fine. And, like caged off, in, like a but side of their house. But they just shit everywhere like bunnies. And you then, can't just let yeah, them but run like, around. You keep, they, they're like they're like sectioned okay. off, but okay. they're like in the house, like rather than in a cage, they're like on the floor running around. How I have strange. photos of all of this. I will absolutely send Where these. Where were you at this time? In Peru. But like, weren't you in hotels? Well, no. I mean, we were in hotels, but then we like walked around the like neighborhoods, and yeah. you can go to these. Um, like artisan crafting kind of places where you watch people like loom and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff and like make all the um cool. like uh, alpaca uh, uh wools and yeah. like all that stuff and it was really cool i did the whole dyeing process and it's really they they take this beetle and they crush up a beetle to make red and they'll even like they're like and they use this as the base for lipstick and it is the br- best red shade you could ever imagine i was From like give beetle. me that shit it is like yes Mm-hmm. If you're familiar with OPIs and not really a waitress, it is that color, which is everybody knows the best shade of red that ever existed. Yes, everybody it's like got a knows. blue base. It's really nice, blue base red. Well, okay, but why would you if you had it in your house? Why would you then eat it? Because they're like a they procreate really fast, oh, and when okay. protein sometimes yeah. is more scarce in yeah. like mountainous regions, where like you eat the other okay. other thing is like. At alpaca which you need to keep yeah. shearing it you can't just go killing those mm-hmm. right and left and uh so they right eat that's like they're they eat a lot of of and of you're what pig. do you think it tastes like kind of like a, a tough like chicken in a way but like darker meat no it's maybe like rabbit like rabbit with less of an intense flavor. You know how rabbit's like a very... It's very gamey. Yeah, very mm-hmm. gamey. This is like less gamey The rabbit. article said that it does taste like chicken, and I laughed because, okay. you know, that's always right. what they and that's say. that's really my first thought because in my head, I have like teeny tiny little drumsticks, I'm telling you. Okay. And you enjoyed it. Yeah, I did. All right. But I also liked uh, uh, alpaca... What is it? Car- carpaccio, which is like a pretty much raw meat. Yeah. I had raw alpaca. Well, you are adventurous. When in Rome or Peru or wherever, I'm totally... I was just having this it's conversation. It's very Anthony bourdain Yeah, I was just mm-hmm. having this conversation with somebody who was like, so you eat you eat whatever. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Because they had specific, like, they're vegan. And they were like, oh, oh. oh, do you mind? Like, I'm like, no, let's go to a vegan restaurant. I'll eat whatever. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you'll eat whatever? Like, okay, well, what if I said that you're eating, you know, cow brains or whatever? And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to pass. And they're well, like, well, what if cow brains is culturally like, well, yeah. you know, a thing? And I'm like, then I'm eating it. Yeah. Like if you're at, some, that's Anthony's philosophy. Yeah. It was like, if you're a guest Correct. and someone is providing you with yeah. sustenance, yes. that you should honor that by eating it. That's why I, you will, I'm one who doesn't ever look like they have a problem on the eating challenges Yeah, because in my mind, you I know like- that this is all food of the region yeah. and people have been eating this and i knew i was like this is what's giving me my energy to climb mountain and if if is if your brain doesn't say it's gross yeah then you will not think it's gross yeah yeah so okay. that's what I, I just try to trick this thing upstairs all the time upstairs yeah. well my problem with the guinea pig ice cream so what's oh, really right. it's ice cream there's like a million yeah, things wrong that's with that the thing it's a i bit also of don't a... want bacon ice cream or chicken ice cream yeah like i even had you know how people love those maple bacon donuts correct so i thought oh i want to try it and oh. i did not enjoy it i would think that would be right up your alley salty sweet i did too but it was too bacony it was right. like this is not do you remember the hilarious ch- oh, i just said it the hilarious ice cream flavor we saw in brazil that we could not get over i didn't we took photo i have the photo i'll show you the photo was it cheese queso <laughs> and we were like, so. what is this? Oh, right. Yes, well, I maybe will, like, it's pull a, up that photo in the you. same. Maybe this is a thing people do. Or is this like one of those hipstery, like, we're well, going to no, make Well, no, that's weird... what I like about it. Okay. Is this is a, a local woman who took a course on how to, like, oh. market her business, which I, and it was very quaint 
Like she's just sort of okay, yeah. of the world. Yeah. And she, they it's said the you have to raise guinea pigs <laughs> for consumption. She, they said, you know, you have to do something that makes you stand out. And yeah. so she really put a lot of effort into like, what are these recipes? And she tried all different ones. Wow. And she landed on this one and people liked it. Oh, well, there must be something. Maybe that is the perfect salty sweet combo. Maybe, or it's like, maybe it's I a region. I want to know what it tastes like. Yeah. What do you think it tastes like? Well, if it's is like it white, chicken, I feel like it's white. Yeah. It feels like it should be a lighter color. It's pureed. <laughs> it's not mm-hmm. like chunks or anything. Well, yeah. No, I do know okay. that. I yeah, can imagine yeah. that. Like I hope it's like essence of guinea pig, not actual <laughs> body parts. Wait, I'm ready. I don't want it to be the Ben and Jerry's of <laughs> like, I don't want chunks of it in there. Like, I don't need to bite into it like it's a frozen banana. Oh, God. Essence no, of guinea no, pig. No. Yes. Well, it's okay. Like extract, like, you, a, like lavender, if you will. Whenever you guys eat that stuff, though, you want to wash it down with something and stay hydrated. And yes. you're going to want to try liquid IV. Oh, I just sent my aunt story. to, uh, she went to Peru. Yeah. It's oh. so weird. And I overnighted her an entire box because I was like, the thing you need to do the most is stay hydrated because you're at higher elevation and you will absolutely get dehydrated. That's so great, Sarah. Sent her the whole entire box. And that's yes. really cool. So there you go. And Sarah's this perfect right. tie-in. This is a great product if you're traveling or if you're at higher elevations, as mm-hmm. it were, um, because it hydrates you two to three times faster than just a bottle mm-hmm. of water. And it has essential vitamins inside of it. And it's just like a little packet of powder. So easy. Yeah. You just, you can throw it in your bag or whatever mm-hmm. and then keep, keep it on hand and pour it into your water bottle or your glass. And it's nice and tasty. They have all different flavors. I, oh my God, I had some after our wine dinner. Me Because I was like, too. I'm going to be hungover. Suze, I almost texted you when I got home and it was like, I don't need to worry about the next day <laughs> because I made sure to have a liquid IV the night I went to bed. Yeah. And then I was like, it's, Sarah, you're just, you, it's freaking one in the morning. You don't need to text for that. <laughs> we were thinking the same thing. We were. I did mine. Really, I should just sent it to Adam. because we, we love Liquid IV. We know you will too. Right now, our listeners get 25% off at liquidiv.com when you use our code CANDY at checkout. That's 25% of anything you order on Liquid IV's website. Go to liquidiv.com and enter promo code CANDY to get your savings and start getting better hydration. That's liquidiv.com. Yes. Uh, promo code CANDY. Don't wait. Start. Yes. properly hydrating today yeah. and you can get them at Costco. Oh, cool. So you know. Um, I've got a really, uh, mm-hmm. inspiring heartwarming story for you. Yes. That I hope, I don't know, translates to here. Okay. Yes. So there was a study done of students from Singapore and they recruited like a thousand of them to participate in the study to see what motivated kids more mm-hmm. and children learned better when they were rewarded collectively. Sorry, I was drinking. Is that not the cutest thing? They, I'm shocked. I love this. If you reward Children a child... Children learn better. Yes. Okay. If you reward the whole group. Wow. And it reminded me of the story about the sports in Norway. Yes, I just and saw I'm that like, article again. This is what we need to focus... Look, kids have it right. Why? Why do you say that? That it creates a... A co- community like, and and the opposite creates competition peer-to-peer competition of like if you're only rewarding one oh yeah no i'm saying if you right. reward them all right then they feel like a they collective. feel like a community yeah and it reinforces that and then there's this sense of i don't do this for me i'm doing this for, for the group the group which increases empathy which increases connection, yeah. which in turn increases self worth, and this feeling of like being part of something bigger, which we know indicate like is a, a big predictor of health and longevity in the future. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh my gosh, we need to be doing this stuff, and like, how, we're doing it wrong with giving the kids like the oh you get a gold yeah. star but you don't, and what that does to the child that is maybe a little bit behind or learns different or doesn't speak up or yeah. doesn't have the loudest voice, whatever it is, is it labels them as a, somebody who's not a winner. Yeah. But when you feel like a part of a group that won, it raises, it's that rising tide floats all ships thing you yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. I just think we need to do, we need to take these studies and like think about how we can use this in, you know, like the simplest easy ways you're throwing a kid's birthday party what do you like 
I'm surprised though that because it specifically says they learn better. Yeah, which I think is so interesting because it motivates them to keep getting the right answer. But it's not just for selfish reasons. It's for and like people tend to put the betterment of the group ahead of their own individual needs when that gets reinforced. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's encouraging. Yeah. And then yeah, so I thought that was really sweet. It said rewards serve as a motivation function only for students who believe they have a chance to achieve them. So when every child believes that they have a chance to achieve, even if it's the whole group, then it motivates everybody to learn. That's nice. Yeah. We're never going to do it. I know. (laughs) Uh, Anyways. I mean, that's a bummer. Yeah. Because that, well, I'm not going to get down in the dumps because I know this is supposed to be a palate cleanser type show (laughs) rather than, but I, Um, when I read stuff lately, I'm like, the whole world's on fire. The only thing that made me kind of like, "Mm," with this one Mm. is where the test was done, where the study was done. Okay. Singapore. Oh. Which could go either way, even though Singapore is one of the most international cities that really doesn't have like a, a, you know, one, it's, it's very diverse it's one of the most diverse, like... Yeah, it's like cosmopolitan. Yes, yes totally. Mm-hmm. That maybe it's it's not as collective as some other Asian, Asian countries yeah. or, or, you know, places. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, so I wonder if the results would be the same in, say, California. And I also mm-hmm. wonder if the results would be similar. Like, is there an age where it changes? Yeah. Is it kind of like the sports thing where after 13, where we kind of need a little bit of competition yeah in order to drive yeah like, right there individual. might be a cap on that right you know so like yeah great with seven-year-olds but 13 year olds don't give a fuck about their yeah. neighbor you know yeah. or whatever that is <laughs> right yeah but that's good information and yeah, I, I, I just thought it was real cute like the picture of all of them working together and like i can remember projects in you know elementary school where it was a collective goal and that those were memorable like uh lessons okay academic lessons now are you talking about like everybody all together or when you had to be working groups no i hate I that i fucking hate that I, shit do well, not give me a why partner we hate project because we, we have to do, do all, it all the work yeah but we do it by choice right i could have taken a back seat well too. but then they wouldn't do it properly this so. correct it will not be done in my level and good is good enough was not a lesson i'd learned until the very last semester of grad school so <laughs> in which they had no more group projects. Although in elementary school, I was the problem. Like my friend Leah would have been the one oh. working hard and I always copied her stuff. Oh my gosh. My friend Ashley, who I just did that event with, we always joke that like I did all of her homework. Yeah. And did yeah. you? Oh, absolutely. See, this is why Leah says she is you in this <laughs> That's story. True. That's oh, so yeah, funny. All of it. I was like, and she, I mean, and she, she like took care of other things for me of like, entertaining you yeah we're gonna hang out with the cool kids and (laughs) uh, don't worry i got you yeah Mm. yeah well it's food for thought at any rate Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um here's a bummer (laughs) since the world's on fire right watch it burn but it's not surprising wikipedia has 1.5 million biographies and only 17 percent are women oh no yeah but it's cool because and mine's half wrong so (laughs) is it well i mean some of the information get out yeah including my age that says i'm 65 years old so I don't know what is happened there. Is it because that other Sarah Rice? Yeah, but it's weird because it's my picture and then she has a separate one. So it's very strange. Anyways. That is so weird. Why yeah. have you not and fixed I've it? And I even, there's, there's also incorrect information on the nature of like sexual abuse that I experienced. And I've gone back and tried to like years yeah, ago. Yeah, edit it. It was rejected or something. What? I'm like, you mean to tell me my own personal experience is not, they're like something about like not va- valid. I'm like, how's the other one verified or validated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you didn't like, have. Uh-huh. I guess it takes more evidence. work to change it than it does to even go up and put it on there. It was, oh I gave up. That was God. a lost cause. So I'm like, I'm not even going to put that on there. But I mean, I'll take I, a nice yeah. screenshot of it for this episode. That is hilarious. Like people have, it, has, have like sent me the link and been like, Wikipedia thinks you're, right. you look great for your age or yeah, something like right. that. That's what they always say. Well, the problem, amongst other things, is that there aren't very many female volunteers, female volunteer editors. To ru- too. Of course there aren't. This makes sense. It's the same reason why people there aren't as many winners of uh, uh, crossword puzzle competitions or memory. It, We're like, because we don't fine. care. We're fucking busy. We don't have time for this. Yeah. I'm busy and making sure you people get fed. Yeah. There's, 
a group though that is trying to you know encourage women to volunteer and get yeah. to writing because it's also it's not just biographies it's also subjects that tend to be yes. more female oriented or underrepresented just because obviously if you're somebody that's editing you're going to want to edit a subject that's yeah. interesting to you and if it's mostly male editors then those pages are going to get more attention. And they're not even connected to some of the things that we would be interested in that mm-hmm. they don't even realize are mm-hmm. like, oh, this is a, a good thing to you know, do an article about because they don't have any invested interest in it. Yeah. Meanwhile, the other 50% of the population does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so if you get spare time, maybe you could volunteer yeah. and write a, a couple things for Wikipedia. That would be nice. Level that's, the playing field yeah, slightly. We need a little bit of that. 17%. That's we crazy. have a long way to go. That reminds me of that, what, like the history book you were saying that was like one page of yeah. it. I still can't get over that. Yeah. Anything about a woman. Ugh. It was a thousand page book Can and there was like that? one page I can't with that worth shit. of women info. Yeah. I mean, I got my aunt when she moved, she had this, um, she was like getting rid of a bunch of stuff and she had a, a, a book of postcards and it was like women throughout history or yeah. whatever. And this was probably made about 10 years ago. I was upset at the lack of diversity in there. Yeah. And I was like, I know there are other women and you chose 25 and they all happen to look like this. I was like, there's like two women of color in there. And it just felt like there are way, like, come on. Yeah. Just like, you know. But it's harder work. Know. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of it comes down to that. Yeah. And um, who's writing it, you know. And who's writing it. Well, here's one thing I know. If you are a woman, you probably have boobs. I do. And you probably don't want to wear a bra because they're uncomfortable. Definitely don't. That, that's why you need Third Love, mm-hmm. Sarah. You're hilarious. Third Love is the perfect bra. Our friend Samantha uh, the Brainiac, she mm. finally got one, she said, and she doesn't know what took her so long. Her breasts are happy. There is nothing better when those gals are in the right place. <laughs> those gals. Yes. Samantha's, or guys, I don't know what gender Congratulations to Samantha's boobs for being comfortable in their third love bra. They have more than 80 sizes, including signature half cups. Um, you can skip the trip to the store and you can find your fit with Third Love's online fit finder. You can order and try on at home. You don't have to have a weird, awkward fitting mm-hmm. room mm-hmm. experience. You know how Sarah feels about fitting rooms. Uh, yep. Not a fan. Right. And now I get real snarky with the people at the lingerie places when they You're ask me so if I want a fitting. Mean. And I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I know. And you guys are wrong. <laughs> they have a perfect love. fit promise, too. If you can, if you get your bra, you wear it for 60 days, wash it, and put it to the test. If you don't love it, you can return it. And they'll donate it to a woman in need. And they're just super comfy. They just are. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering our listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash brain now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash brain for 15% off. You know, now that you say that, I think I'm missing a Third Love bra. I think I lost a bra. In the move? Yeah. You probably left it at one of your laundromats. I probably did. You know how like I did do that. Well, oh my god. Speaking of which, I <laughs> she's I mad. did. She's mad. I like took all my stuff out of the laundry and there were so, out of the washing machine and there were some items that I needed to that didn't need to go in the, the dryer that needed to get air dried. Yeah. And I put them like on top of that little basket thing, like you know the little baskets that maybe you don't know because you don't know the laundromat. Yeah. But they're like the metal. The one Rachel sits in when yes. she. There you go. Okay. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Need a friend's reference to clarify. Yeah. And so there's like a little metal pole that goes above that. And I like uh, put yeah. them on there. Yeah. And then I put all the stuff in. I forgot to take the stuff off. Were some of my favorite. A bathing suit. Uh-huh. White bathing suit you I love. Like them? four items. I forgot them. This yeah. was probably at nine o'clock at night. The next morning I come back and I'm like, did you by any chance, without me even finishing the sentence, she was like, no, nope, we don't say it. And I'm like, you don't even know what I'm going to ask. And she's like, no, we don't have it. And I get it. They're signed to say we're not responsible. For the last the but <laughs> I mean, but come on, you would have noticed a whole pile of stuff. So I'm wondering, is that a move that some people do of like a sweep yeah, of poachers. the laundromat mm-hmm. after closing? I-, I think it might be. Oh, but I was like, they- somebody got good clothes because they got was a really a lot cute. Of stuff? It was probably like four or five items, but like all white stuff and which are always my favorite yeah. and um the good like this really cute abercrombie and fit shirt that i loved that i just bought that's like is tragic yeah, like, oh, okay well whatever 
Um, but man. I bought that cute leopard print bathing suit as a replacement, so yeah. I felt justified in it, and I love it. Right. Yeah. That sucks, though. I know. That kind of stuff sticks with me. Um, me too. I don't right? know why. Yeah. It's just feel because like I would never do that of like steal yeah. people's clothes. I just couldn't understand why somebody. Ew, would want, I wouldn't want to. Right, you don't want my bathing suit. I know. I mean, I do buy used stuff, so I don't know why it's different, Correct. but it feels different. Right. It does. It feels like. But you buy used stuff where people are like, "I'm pres- I'm yeah. here. I am ready to hand this over to you. It right. is in the condition. To, yes. And I mean, we can assume that everything's been washed. Yeah. That they're finding, but. Yikes. Mm. I also found out that my laundromat, or there's a rumor going around in my neighborhood. <laughs> I learned when I was doing the laundry. Yes. That the laundromat I've been using limits their water. Like, makes it so it doesn't fill all the way. And now Come that on. somebody said that, I did a load and it came out way too dry. And I was like, I gotta change up my laundromat. Because Ew. this guy, they're like, they're like, what are they, like... Yeah, restricting the water uh-uh. that goes in each thing, and it makes it. And I had one thing come out. I'm like, I washed this. This should be clean. This is still filthy. Not happy. I can see you like getting out your magnifying glass. Right. Like, I selected like, every item I smelt. I was like, <sighs> safe. <laughs> safe. Uh, safe. Yeah. I was like, this was well, okay. Well, you load. have to use that like laundry detergent that's yes. for sensitive people. Because one time I didn't, and I want Susie's Her house, vagina was like, not happy. Everything, my whole body wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. I had like my arms had ra- like I am oh so God, sensitive. Just from using my detergent, I'm so sensitive to. I mean, I only made that mistake one day, and then I just rewashed everything because it was like I have to. I gotta get that. Yeah, I gotta use a whole bunch of crazy. I even use a special allergen additive mm-hmm. that you like add a little. 1.5 table teaspoons. It's like a it's, measure it out, and it like kills all the allergies, all the dust stuff, like everything. Because I'm just you're sensey. What's wrong with me? I wouldn't have pegged you as a sensitive lady. Me neither. I wouldn't have said that about myself. But yeah. the older I get, the more like she has needs. You guys, yeah, all of them. Tons. Let me ask you this. This is a was a really cool article in Atlant- Atlantic, and it was. Um, I haven't read that magazine in a minute. I like that. It's so great. Yeah. Um, they just added a paywall, though, so you only get, like, I don't oh, know, five three, a month yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, Running into that problem with the New York Times. It was probably a good move, though, because it took me about three seconds to order the whole year. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, they did an article about um, something, and I wanted to see what your thoughts were. Mm. Okay. Self-view, how you see yourself. Correct. Oh, yeah. This is what I base my freaking theory on. Okay. Yes. Then you'll be able to... Very I'm sure you'll already know this then. But the the deeply held belief uh, you have about yourself mm-hmm. um, is a huge motivator for how we behave even when it is a, it acts negatively against you. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, t- these are the labels that were... That were- that are stuck on us as a child that we identify with the same as the child who feels like he can't get the answer right. So now he's the dummy in class. I view myself as a dummy. Every single thing, I won't even approach a math problem the same way because I assume I don't know about it. Yeah. And it was saying that we will do things to solidify the view because it makes our brain happy. Correct. Um, Even if it makes us look like garbage. This is the child who acts out in class and gets negative attention and it does that kind of stuff and you go you know this kid ends up in detention for it but does it anyway does it anyway because because it makes his brain happy in that moment and if everybody labels you i mean this is like high school and junior high kids all the time if you get labeled as like the class clown who like always has the ants like come back answer to the teacher that becomes your identity even if you know it's what gets you in trouble it's hard. When I read it, um, it's interesting on a personal level, of course, because you think about your own behavior and what, whether that... What came up for you when you thought Reality that? TV, and when we get placed with a label, like you're the villain. Uh, totally. You're the virgin. You're the whatever Correct. you are. And you know what you're being labeled as. Yes. How you almost act that way. Right. It's not necessarily for your brain to be happy because it wouldn't be embedded yet, mm-hmm. but it's like... Just because the producers have labeled you like you're the good girl. It would almost create cognitive dissonance if that was the label you were getting from your out... Because that's how we kind of define ourselves. Like, what is our outside? Yeah. You know, that's what I work on with with 
you know, it, it, like that's my theory. It's like, how do you see yourself? How do other people see you? And how do you believe other people see you? And if so all then, those are in line, then you, then behavior, functioning, all th- things are better. Yeah. You feel better. You are, you communicate more congruent. Your relationships are healthier. But when there's a discrepancy between yeah. how you view, view yourself, yes. how other people view you, yes. and how you believe other people view you. Yeah. Those are three completely different things. Right. There's like, it's like the I, the view of other, there's like names for all three. Right. For a lot of people, those are not the same. Right. And that's very upsetting. Correct. And can lead to dysfunctional right. and relationships. And often leads to us doubling down on whatever that behavior is. Like a simple example is me being the one to answer every single question in school. I was like, I'm the question That's answerer. who I am. That's who yeah. I am. And I didn't really understand that other people viewed that as kind of like impeding their learning or their like, oh God, there's that chick answering all the questions again kind of thing. I was just like, oh, people are going to think I'm the smart one in class. And that like reinforces my view of myself that I know everything. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. But even if they and didn't like it, you were still doing it. Correct. Because, yeah, because your brain my idea of what they thought about me was different than how they actually did. And then mm-hmm. when I got a little more feedback in grad school about like, oh, I think this is annoying. And I stopped <laughs> and I understood like it goes one of two ways. You either want to like keep doing it more. Yeah. Or you have this like new awareness and you're like, oh, I think I'm going to make my idea. Mm-hmm. Oh, could other people view this as maybe a little yeah. annoying? Oh, I see that now. And then my behavior changed. And in doing so, my, self, my confidence in myself went up mm-hmm. the less I needed to feel like I had to like define who I was mm-hmm. through these like yeah. no, prove that I'm smart. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that like Dunning-Kruger effect again kind of thing of like, no, I know I'm good. So mm-hmm. now I don't have to answer the question. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it is like we want to do that. Yeah. And that it also made me think about those types of labels that not just oh, yeah. your family gives you, but also at school, the sort of dumb reading table or the smart yes. one. I mean, that really gets internalized. And then, and we all know, kids know what yeah. is going on. And it can take a really long time, if ever, right. for someone to be like, oh. My well, brother was like that. Yeah. Fail, 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 kicked out of high school, like ever, like bad passing, didn't pass, was told like, ah, oh, well, you're just not, this is not, school isn't your thing. Mm-hmm. He is an engineer mm-hmm. in engineering school with getting 99% in classes that I can't even pronounce the name of mm-hmm. i'm like i don't even know what those words are and it was because he shed the label of like he's not good in school yeah that like, can be sec- very yes, hard to do yeah and it can impossible. take a really long time and uh, with family uh, in my experience Co- right it's not going away right i'm still seen as the young you know the little sister and all of those things and it's kind of it can be very limiting yeah. Unless you make a very intentional effort to right. be the other thing. But they, the article did a great mm-hmm. job of um, adding more depth to it by describing what happens when you assume a group fusion. Ooh, in the interesting. Like a cult or Al-Qaeda. Yeah. Where like that can become your identity and how like you're willing to take your body into a plane and fly wow. it into a building because it's this... Your brain wants that consistency of like, I am this person. I'm going to kill myself to right. be that person. Right. That's how severe it can be when wow. you... That we really are at the mercy of our... Like, <laughs> I know, our sad little brains. Yeah. But Let's anyway. remind ourselves we're in the driver's seat every now and then. Well, yeah. I mean, you have to be really careful though. Interesting. Because it's influential. But I thought that was interesting. And um, hopefully you can find it on Atlantic if you want to read more. Because it's quite long. Um, article, but the good ones always are. Yeah, but I gave you the uh, Cliff Notes yeah. version. Did you ever read those when you were? Little? I was just th- it, as soon as you said that, I had that thought. Also, I'm confused on whether it's Cliff's notes, like it belongs Cliff's to notes. it. It is. Yeah, I Not believe Cliff it's possesses. Notes. Yeah, possesses, like it's like yeah. his notes. I think so because right? it's. No, a I never did. But Isn't I was. It? I was at. I was such a rule follower that I felt like somehow somebody would know that I was cheating if I did that mm-hmm. it felt like it's one of the i'm like i can't even i maybe didn't have google then but i was like i can't even 
look it up because what if they count that as... I was very scared of plagiarizing or anything like Just the scared of all that. So getting in trouble. Because I was the label, the good girl, who I never got in trouble. Does that company even exist? I'm sure it does. What, it Christmas? still exists. Yeah. I'm sure. I think there's a different one now, too, yeah, that people but use. But they're really just like little books. And like, there was a moment where I realized that the books that were assigned to me were books I actually cared about reading. And I was like, oh, I don't need to read this version. I want the actual, I like love doing this. Yeah. Yeah. I really should reread all of the things that I pretended to read in high school. I was really like, good what would be at an writing example? an entire essay on a book that That's I had never read. That's annoying. I hated people like So you. good. I mean, oh, I could like BS my way through any paper. Never read Animal Farm. Definitely gotten it. I mean, I got it every, I read an, like a few, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I get it. Like, you're the worst. The worst. Like, I, don't even I like know. You. I know. It's awful. <laughs> you would have been it's like awful. the one in like a different friend group being like, ugh, there she is raising her hand again. I mean, like, I didn't read it stuff. either. Right. But like, I for sure wasn't getting A's. But you weren't like, pig. yeah. And I was like, ugh. Right. Ugh. It's the, it is the worst. And then I was like the biggest brown noser. I'll just like make friends with the teacher. And then they're like, oh, she was funny today in lunch. <laughs> a. You know, except for God. one teacher who. What did she call me? The <clears throat> epitome of every teacher's worst nightmare. Why? I don't know. I she just didn't like me. And once <sighs> she got me in trouble, it was my last day at this school. At, at I was transferring high school, so my, it was my very last day. And I was like, I'm going to break all the rules today. You weren't allowed to wear a hat to school. I wore a cowboy hat, like a, the, the loudest, biggest, like most offensive cla- hat I could find. And then I brought a. Str- I don't know. It was like a class after lunch. It was a science class. God, she hated me. And, and you know what? She was right for not liking me. Uh, it must have been something about after lunch. I was like all hopped up on who knows what. And uh, social interaction maybe. And uh, <laughs> uh, I brought a, a straw and I was shooting spit wads into people's hair. And then she punished me and she was oh like, go Christ. sit in, the, in that chair right there. And she picked the chair that was broken. And she fucking knew it was broken. And I sat in that chair and I fell through the thing and it was really embarrassing. I'm so she sorry. She like set me up for an embarrassing moment. That's awful. I thought so too. And I was like, she knew that. Ugh. Yeah, you, you look really silly falling in a cowboy hat. <laughs> That's something to keep in mind, people. Another thing to keep in mind is how you want to be fit and open fit is the way to go. Don't let the temperatures be the only thing falling this season. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Take the plunge, lose some weight, yes. whatever. Uh, get strong. Don't wait for New Year's. That's stupid. No. Do I mean, you can if you start. want, but you shouldn't. Just go with Open Fit now because you can. Uh, it's basically Netflix of workout videos, so something for everyone or whatever mood you're in that day. Mm. If you're into yoga, extend bar, or like one of those crazy insanity, yeah. Whatever. Or if you just want ten minute abs, exactly. Do there's that. something. There's like videos of every length and all that, and you can watch them if you're in a hotel room, if you're at home. You don't have to go to the gym because f that. Yeah. Um, watch it on your. TV, your phone, your iPad, whatever, and uh, you will get stronger and you'll feel better. Get into a little routine. Open Fit has changed the way I work out and texting our code Brain Candy to 303030. You can join us on our fitness journey personalized just for you. Right now, during the Open Fit 30 day challenge, our listeners get a special extended 30 day t- free trial membership to Open Fit when you text Brain Candy to 303030. You'll get full access to Open Fit, all the workouts and nutrition information totally free. Again, just text Brain Kitty to 303030. Disclaimer, standard message and data rate supply. You already knew that, though. Yeah. Those things are, you know, I think it's like we, we have all these goals for ourselves, and sometimes it's like, oh, my God, there's so many things that I want to accomplish, and it seems so overwhelming. Yeah, right. But if you just go, I'm going to make one change. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Right? And mm-hmm. sometimes that one little thing is like throwing a rock into a pond and has a ripple effect. I agree. So I promise, like, I don't promise. I can't promise anything. I'm pretty 100% sure that <laughs> like you people make would hold one you little, to Right. It. You make one little, it's like not like the BBS is coming after me right now. Like, right? <laughs> Board of Behavioral Science, for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, so, like, you make one little change of, yeah. like, I'm going to join this, like, workout program. I'm going to do that, like, one day. I, everything else falls in line when you tr- do that one. Yeah. It's like you're, you're... That's been my experience. It, really? Mm-hmm. Me too. It's, it's like, like the objects better, in motion type like, of thing. Totally. Yeah. And it just don't think about all of them because it's like, I can't think about eating healthy, drinking no. enough water, working out, all this, getting enough sleep. Uh, but if I just think, I'm going to work out yeah. three days this week. 
Yeah. Everything else I'm going to do one happens. push-up. Right. Do that. Do one push-up. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You're so... That is so right. Scale it back even more. Right? <laughs> just, Why not? Just wake up. Yeah. Just, right. Congratulations. Get out of bed. Brush your teeth. That's something. That's it. Listen to this yes. bonkers story. I love bonkers stories. I was really into this. I saw this on Instagram, a picture of it. What? This dude, it was black and white picture, so it was a long time ago, but like maybe maybe the six, 50s or 60s. Okay. Okay. This surgeon went on an expedition to Antarctica mm-hmm. with like a group, mm-hmm. and they were there, they were going to be there for a year, I think. And he, because he was a doctor, he was starting to not feel well. Mm-hmm. And so he had to diagnose himself. And eventually he realized that he had appendicitis. Oh, God. That only gets worse. And there's only one solution. What? And he's the surgeon. No, he didn't. What did he do? He took his own appendix out. What the actual fuck? <laughs> he did. And there is a freaking picture of it. And he. You know what? It's crazy what we can do if we're. Well, you know yeah, because he had no choice. Because at that time, <sighs> I get this. he knew that the, he wasn't going to be able to go home mm-hmm. in time. Mm-hmm. Like this was an emergency; mm-hmm. it was urgent, and if it mm-hmm. if his appendix burst, he would likely die. Right. So he didn't want to do it. It's not like he was like, "Oh, right. this is fine, no problem." And when your when your brain kind of does like a cost benefit analysis, and I think in reduces pain because the goal the the. It wants so bad to feel better or to. I've gone after a pretty aggressive ingrown hair in the same way and didn't feel a goddamn thing, and it was straight up surgery. So you, so Sarah totally understands. Totally get what it's like because I have done bathroom surgery before. So and I'm like, this doesn't even hurt. When in reading about it, because you can um, look on Wikipedia because he's a man, so this story's been documented. <laughs> um, and oh. he describes what it was like. Oh my God. Which, what? I mean, so he had um, local anesthetic. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good. Yeah, better than nothing. Oh my God, but to cut open your own body. And he, okay, so the rest of the team, he gave them all jobs. Like, okay, I'm going to ask for this tool. And, like, they had to work as a team and, like, observe it. And he even gave them instructions. Here's what to do if you notice me losing consciousness. Oh, for Christ's sake. Right? You're right. Because you really don't know how you're going to react and what the local does or what. Or if, like, or just the sight will make you pass out. Right, that would make, I'm I'm thinking about passing out at the mere thought of what that would be like. (laughs) I would be terrible at doing this. He described the process and um eventually he said he got into like the zone right where his brain was in like that i almost imagine it is you have to disassociate and you then and there's something about when people when people are in extreme states of emotion and they're given a task that the task almost satisfy like creates a it's job. like a distraction it is a distraction so you don't even thing. see yourself you're like above the action yeah doing this thing I mean, he did say he almost passed out. It wasn't as oh, if it were just, he was just out of the woods or anything. But um, he just described, he thought he was going to have to use mirrors because he couldn't see yeah. everything. But it was, you know how it's confusing when you look in a mirror? Right. And so he just did it by feeling. Ah! <laughs> Which means there's a lot of poking around. Sarah. I'm, I'm a it's very horrifying. visual person. Like, I can create this entire... Yeah. I can see the picture in my mind and yeah. that feeling and the, also the noise. You know that? Sarah. Sarah. That's what it would sound like. Stop. Do, do you disagree? I can't believe you. Not only did you know the noise, but you could replicate it right. on command. Can't do any accents, but I can crush <laughs> bodily function noises. So the surgery noise upsets you. It, the noise like of rooting bushing, around. Yeah, of, of like like <laughs> organs. Yeah. Moving. And <laughs> like, moving. Like, Christ. It just feels like, you know those like little squishy balls that you like squeeze that have like yes. little things inside Liquid. of them that are like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It feels like that. Well, and at like, any Whoa. rate, it was a success and he, you know, sewed yeah. himself back up. Good job, buddy. And recovered and yeah. was, you know, back to pretty much normal mm-hmm. in a couple weeks. But you know what? Did, did you see 127 hours? No, but Adam said that's what that's like. Yeah, that's what yeah. my mind goes to. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'd definitely cut my arm off. I've already had the whole yeah, thought about like... you'd have to. 100%. And it would be like a no. It would be like, yeah, yeah, we're doing this. Well, do you, in that film, mm-hmm. was it the case that his nerves had been deadened? 
Or was it excruciating? I think it was excruciating, but oh, I have no idea. I mean, it seems like... I can't. I can't. I How did he get through the bone? This is a real With, like, disgusting... A really, like, dull... dull. Oh! <laughs> The the movie's one thing, but the interview that the actual guy did, I think it's with uh, uh, Dave Letterman. What did he say? It's a good. I don't even remember, but I remember watching that. I, I'm I, gonna watch it. That was it. like there aren't very many, as you know, very movie many movies that send me on a deep dive. This was one, and I think it's because I like hiking and outdoorsy stuff. Where I thought, holy shit, this <clears> could <throat> be a scenario that I and I like doing it alone. I love like I went canyoneering in Red Rock by myself and was yeah. like, I'm just gonna solo this, mm-hmm. and then I was like. Oh, but wait, wait, what about that thing where like I never come back? And like, so oh, I was man. like, I gotta like look into this. And I watched the video of of him on like the real guy on David Letterman. I was just like, oh my god, that's intense. Did he seem in the interview? Do you remember? Did he seem particularly exceptional or he no, was just like a casual? Dude yeah, just a dude. But who like, was yeah. in an impossible situation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. and he rose to the occasion. Yeah, and then he. I think got your brain out. helps is puts you in like you're in survival mode, and I think it's like pain. Like well, what the else? Same as I was like with that ingrown hair. He was like, <laughs> this thing has to get out. So we're in sort of straight up. Then survival did they mode. ever retrieve the arm? I, I don't know if that's good question, but I don't or is think it so. still I sitting there? <gasps> oh, that's a good question. Like retrieve it as okay. in collect the, not like for. The arm. Putting it back on, yeah, just, but just because, like, who wants a body part <laughs> on a very popular trail? I guess it just decomposes quickly. Yeah, but, or like an animal comes by and carries that off. Oh, I right. think that's probably more likely. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, something to think about. That's weird. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I'll post that picture for your viewing. But it's not graphic oh, okay, or anything. Got it, got it. It's just sort of like, yeah, what's he doing? Yeah. Wait a minute, what's I've he doing? Right, I've definitely in my mind played through giving myself stitches. I, yeah, no problem. I'll do all that. I don't have a transition for this. <laughs> I'm really mad at myself. But if you're getting married <laughs> and you want to have the perfect wedding day and you don't want to do all the terrible organizing that's drudgery, mm-hmm. Zola is a great option because it helps you plan everything, get everything organized, tell your guests what they need to know, and also tell them what the heck they should buy you. Yeah, like maybe a stronger and sharper blade if you are going to go camping. <laughs> get in that proper knife yeah um it's the easiest way to plan your wedding and register it takes the stress out of everything they have free wedding websites so you know you can put all that info about how like Mm -hmm. you met and all that romance Mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um it's all conveniently managed in one place and uh you can get invites you can get um save the dates they have tons of invite designs did we talk about the registry already no oh getting there sorry no you can yeah tell them Tell them what you like about that. You can make your whole registry. You can make it from different places. Yeah. Whatever you want. They can register as a group. I yes. love this. And then whatever you have left over, you get a discount on. Yeah. My friend just got married and she used that. And Good. she was like, I loaded our whole house up with stuff. Yeah. It's super convenient. Yeah. And yeah. you build your whole suite at Zola. And um, their prices are friendly. It's really nice for your budget. Mm-hmm. And they have a deal. Sign up at Zola.com slash brain candy. Get 30% off your invites and paper order. Sign up at Zola.com slash brain candy. Get 30% off your invites and paper order. Yeah, they do the Z- invitation. No problem. Yeah. It's all one-stop shop. Z-O-L-A dot com slash brain candy. There you go. Yeah. Go on, thing, go. Well, you know, maybe I'll be using that some other My time. God. I she's already that. planning her next one. No. Who is it? We don't know. We don't know. I don't know. Question mark. Mm, Who just cares? myself. They're incidental. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's like the truth. Oh, that is funny. Mm. Do you have a story? Or do you want me to carry oh, on with oh, my... Oh, let me check my... Go, carry on. Okay, well... Whatever you need. I, I don't I really know the so details of this. Recently. This was like a headline where a woman who had embezzled money weirdly from a cemetery. I'm not sure how that... Weird. Went, but she embezzled $19,000. And I think she had been like charged with that. And then she, you know, was supposed to pay it back. Mm-hmm. And then she was caught playing bingo. <laughs> And okay. they arrested her because they're like, Wait, what do you, you mean owe, caught playing bingo? They're like, like, you owe this money to these people and you're out here playing bingo. Oh my God. So the, the bingo was like her almost illawful or what's the word? Unlawful? Illawful? What the hell is unlawful? that word? Unlawful. I'm like, what? Is what but unlawful brain? what? Playing bingo? It's yeah. like she, she should be spending she her was... funds in other places. Yes. 
It's kind of like if you had like a parking ticket and decided to go to Vegas and go gambling, and they're like, "Oh, yes, give us some money for parking exactly. ticket." Exactly. They're like, "Wait, yeah. you said you didn't have that." That happened on my season of The Real World, where what? one and one member of the show borrowed money from another, you and can then name we went them. to ex- Atlantic City, and oh. she, she was gambling, and my friend was like. I mean that's something uh, that happens. Why yeah. are you? Why do you have money to gamble? But I just loaned you however many hundreds of dollars. When you loan money, you have to just it's assume gone. you're never going to get absolutely hundred percent. Never loan out any money that you don't expect to because they might pay you, you back, but back. you can't assume. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's totally the truth. Anything. I'm I like, remember oh, even hearing seen. Oprah say that that like she doesn't do loans. Right. Like, here, take it. Take it. Because it will ruin your friendship yes, because they won't pay you back if you're a billionaire. Right. And that'll always be the thing. Oh, right. You know? I would. Be like, here. Yeah. I yeah. believe that I would, but Correct. apparently most people do most not. Most people do not. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And definitely family. Just be like, mm, just have it. If you went yeah. to dinner with a billionaire, yeah. would you <sighs> offer to pay? This is funny because my mom has a client that she works with you know, as a psychic. She, they're from Dubai, and they're a very wealthy family. Yeah. So wealthy, in fact, that my mom was just in England. They flew their family to England to meet my mom to have one session with her to help them determine Whoa. where they were going invest, to invest their billions of dollars. You're lying I'm to me. I'm not lying. I, I, I was just like, my mom was like, what? I don't know what we're doing. And then we were, my mom was cracking up because they took her out to dinner and my mom is like notorious for like ordering no food and trying to be like, like not a problem for people. Yeah, you know, like yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to inconvenience yes. you, like whatever. They went to a Mediterranean restaurant. My mom orders tabbouleh, and when the check came, my mom was like, "Would you like? I'll, yes, I'll give you ten dollars." Remember, for I it. told you she did yes. this to me at my wedding, and we're like, mm, mm, she and they all, everybody at the table, like laughed at her yeah, and was like, ridiculous. "You don't need." And she even laughed at herself. She's like, "These guys are billionaires," and I'm like, "Here, would you like my seven dollars for tabbouleh?" And I was like, <laughs> "Mom, just you don't even reach for like, just like." Uh, you What's know? the protocol, though? Because I go out sometimes with this person. I think person. it depends on who invites the person out. Like, <sighs> I know. And, and what the tone is of, like, you know, if they pick the place. I, I, I always think if, if, the, if whoever's doing the inviting and then choosing the spot should be the one to be like, I'm going to assume I pay for it. But if the other person is, I think it's always safe to go in with the assumption that, you know, yeah, you're gonna pay for it unless there's a. So, you know, so okay, it's hard with like because I know who you're talking about. Did I go out with? Yeah, yeah, and um, I never pay, right. which I always pay. Otherwise, like I know I'm a, it's I'm a almost payer. where I have to like. Sarah intervene. does like weird slick things where she'll like go to the Because I have to. Because anyway. I'm like she can't bankroll my life or at least my <laughs> my wine habit. But like my thing is i just it's kind of like oprah and the money like yeah. i'm paying i'm not i'm not gonna right. even think it's about easier. it yeah. but with him it's like i don't feel right because mm-hmm. it's almost like it would be rude for me to offer weirdly yeah i know what i i could and get that and i and don't think like, he cares or thinks about it at all and if i had 200 million dollars i wouldn't think about it either right. but uh, maybe this is one of those things that's kind of like the congruent communication where it's like my heart's being fast oh your mind's too thing where you just say Every time, I don't know what it is, but every time I go out, I get this weird feel. like, say it. I think it's so good when people communicate those feelings because a lot of times it's in our own head. And what we really need is permission from the other person to be like, this, I don't actually care about this. Yeah. And Usually then though, there's like that, a third person. Oh, yeah, you, know? you can't do that. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just let it go. Yeah, but yeah. anyway, yeah, yeah, it's a real pickle. Yeah. But, but you know what's funny is I'm the you in every <clears throat> other group. Yeah, yeah. Where well, it's like, it's like gross to not And be. I'm like, I'm going to do that. Like, I don't fucking hate. Just let you Like go. the people that start fucking doing the math. I can't with that. But if then you're I doing think, that, is that like, like, maybe it's just my if privilege a, position If it's like a, be. no, but, oh, maybe. But if it's like a budget thing. Right. That's different. Yeah. Then the person that has more money Correct. should just and do I'm it. And I'm so happy to do it. Yeah. Like, I know those friends where I'm like, this is, I got, I got, this is like, it, it matters more if, to you then does me I'll, I have no yeah. problem doing this. Yeah. And I'm never going to sign up to go to dinner if I feel like I couldn't pay the entire bill for everybody. Yes, that's, that's my feeling. That's kind of my feeling. Yeah. 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 But it's awkward. Yeah. And 
And even in some nights where I'm like, oh, no, we'll just split it. And afterwards, I'm like, no, I got And it feels good to be like, oh, mm-hmm. it's on me. What but, else? you know, splitting's fine. Yeah. Like, if everybody's on the same. Right. You just know. don't take out your calculators. Please. Like, Please. And whatever and like, you do, right do not then on the back of the, the server. Of, like, this is for this one. I don't know. I just feel like you get to a certain age where you're like, just, here you go. Yeah. I don't know. I'll, like, quietly resent you. If you like, <laughs> never offer to buy me. If you buy me one drink, yeah. I'll love you for life. That's true. So that really is I all. am actually, I'm very uh, impressed with the gentleman I'm going on dates with. Yeah. And them Why? Because they, there is no, like, uh, who's going to take you were like, because he has a this? really big dick. That, well, that's <laughs> no. <laughs> what if it had <laughs> nothing to do with nothing the bill? To, I'm like, oh, he's got a Wait, good Wait, what were you saying? That they've all made that very easy. Like, there hasn't been, it hasn't even been a question. And when I was dating before, when I was like 24, it was. Well, we people did are go different. This. Right. Yeah, finances And in my head, different. I'm still in that, you know, I'm still 24 in dating. And I'm like, just getting used to being old. Like, everybody has a job. Yeah. And we're all good. Mm-hmm. You know? And I think that's how I, I, in a way, kind of like exerted control or power is to take care of the bill. Yeah. And I have to not do that. Yeah, no. Changes the dynamic. I that. am. That is interesting, though, the dating scenario and like right. how you handle it. Because I don't, I don't what know. What do you do? Because some guys wouldn't like it if you paid. The, you right. Know? Some guys right. don't like that. Right. And I think it, by, uh, there are certain times where I need to let them take care of me in this because it sets up the So you have not balance. had one date where you've sensed that like they wanted no. to maybe split seats? No. Not one. Not even close. Hmm. Not I'm even I'm surprised close. actually because I would think some of them I might do it. I haven't even seen the check at most of yeah. the time where they're like real good at Of course I've only I don't Don't yeah. s- I, I, it makes me laugh when you act like there aren't that many. <laughs> there and I well, know now in your it's up mind, to like four. That's not a lot. <laughs> yeah, but four people. But you go out on oh yeah more yeah. than one date, and yeah. so then like to well, me like it feels like people every each, like, day. Twice. That's not a lot. That's a lot. That's in like three but months. I don't mean dates, a lot right. in a bad way. Right. I mean no, no, like, no. this is an right, abundance. Right, right. I see. Like w- the social calendar is full. Kind of yes. Thing. Yeah, and it is good. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Sarah dating isn't that the best thing ever. You people. I, I mean, I love it. I mean, this it has been funny. the best thing to happen oh in my, my life God. in a long time. And everybody should just join us in our Patreon Q&As because oh that's Lord. where I really talk about because I know those dates aren't listening to that. Yeah. And, or I hope they're not. Yeah, it's a little more personal. You'll let me know if anybody become any familiar <laughs> oh names my because, God. and you get any new members. Yeah. But some of them do listen to the podcast. So. That's allowed. That's that will, Yeah, yeah. Uh, As they else should. It's hilarious. Before we go, Sarah, do you have anything you want to get to? Just like, you know, I love you all. Leave a five star review. Love you, you guys. Know, or you follow us on Instagram. Oh, my things. God. Okay, bye. <laughs> podcast is brought to you by wave podcast network check out all of our shows including the brain candy podcast i don't get it coffee convos and let's talk about it